Hey guys, it's Danny, and today I am here with another Ingredient 101. We're covering rhubarb. Now, it took me a minute to get on board with rhubarb, but I'm happy to say that I am now a big fan and excited to share with you guys everything that I've learned. Starting with what I find to be one of the most interesting things about rhubarb, and that is that it is technically a vegetable. It grows in the ground, it is a relative of buckwheat and sorrel, but because it's treated like a fruit in most dishes, it's cooked in sweet dishes and desserts, in 1947, a court actually reclassified it as a fruit in order to lower the tariffs and make it less costly. So rhubarb is basically a vegetable that we pretend is a fruit. Now when it grows, rhubarb has these long, thick stalks, looks just like celery, and on top, large, somewhat triangular leaves. Now, we are just gonna be talking about the stems because the leaves are actually not edible. They contain toxic levels of oxalic acid and they're poisonous. And you'll see that more times than not when rhubarb is sold, the leaves will already be taken off. But should you ever come across a rhubarb stalk that still has the leaves on, make sure that you cut it off and put it in the garbage. Now, rhubarb is a spring and early summer crop that is rich in antioxidants high in fiber and loaded with calcium and vitamin C. And like all fruits and veggies, if you just follow the seasons, you will always be rewarded with a higher nutrient value at a lower cost. There's two basic types of rhubarb out there. One is more traditional. You're gonna get these thicker, wider stalks. And the other is a more dainty, thinner, slender stalk, sometimes called hothouse rhubarb. Now, from a flavor perspective, not a lot of difference. So in my opinion, I say, whatever rhubarb you can get your hands on, go for it. When buying rhubarb, the first thing you're gonna notice is that some are more green, some more pink, and then others, this really deep, rich crimson red. Now, the color does not indicate how ripe they are, although from personal experience, I do find that the green tend to be a little more mellow, and this deep, deep red tends to be a little more tart. Either way, what you're looking for is a nice, plump, firm stalk of rhubarb that is a little bit shiny and not too beat up. You, as you can see, mine have a few nips and bumps in them. Ultimately, it's fine, but of course, the cleaner, the better. Once you get your rhubarb home, you wanna loosely wrap it in a plastic bag. The one you get from the grocery store would be perfectly fine. Then just pop it into the veggie drawer in your fridge, and if it's fresh, it'll last up to two weeks. When you're ready to use the rhubarb, give it a rinse under some cold water, trim off the ends, and then just chop it up. It's very similar to working with celery. Now, some people like to peel their rhubarb before they work with it, but I've never really found the need for that. Plus, that skin has such a nice, rich color, which tells me it's got lots of antioxidants, and it's got lots of fiber, so I always leave it on. If you've never tasted rhubarb before, it has a very tart flavor, so it's usually cooked with some type of sugar or with another berry to help mellow it out a bit, and more times than not, you're gonna see it in dessert recipes, but it also works in savory dishes like chicken, pork, and even lentils. Just make yourself a nice little chutney or rhubarb sauce and you're good to go, which reminds me, you guys have to come back next week because I am sharing my favorite rhubarb raspberry sauce with a kiss of ginger. So if you're ready to get in the kitchen and play around with rhubarb, just know it loves to be paired with berries, apples, cinnamon, and ginger, and it also enjoys a little simmer, roast, or saute. If you've ever worked with rhubarb before, I wanna hear all about what you like to do with it down in the comments below. For more simple and nutritious recipes, tips, and ideas, be sure you come on over to cleananddelicious.com where you can print all the recipes, save your favorites right to your very own personal recipe box, and subscribe to my newsletter. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm Danny Spees, and I'll see you next time with another Ingredient 101. Now, we are just... Now today... <clears throat> now, rhubarb is a spring and early summer crop